Today I'm doing something I've been looking forward to doing. I mean, it's one of the reasons I started this channel and that is to answer your questions. And some of you have asked some questions and in this video I'm going to be answering, answering one of them. Uh, what a professional editing timeline should look like from V1 to V7 and A1 to A6. If you're a filmmaker or just getting into video editing, it's important to understand how to organize your timeline to make a professional looking movie. So in this video, we'll be looking at an example of a timeline in Premiere Pro, but you can apply these tips to any non-linear editing software of your choice. So without further ado, let's dive in. The timeline is where you put all your clips together to create your movie. The timeline is like a form of art for editors, really. You know, when it comes to timelines, they can go from being quite bare and scanty to actually being complex and jam-packed. And it can be overwhelming at first, but here are some basic uh, principles to keep in mind that will help you stay organized, which is number one, actually. A professional timeline should be organized and consistent. You should have a system for where things go and stick to it. For example, certain tracks for dialogue, certain tracks for sound effects, color graded clips, etc. This helps with your speed and efficiency and even collaboration with other editors. You know, other team members should be able to look at your timeline, understand it and start working on it without needing you to explain the mess that you have created. It might be worth stating at this point that timelines will often vary across projects. There is no one size fits all. However, the tips I'm sharing with you here will give you a solid template that you can then adapt to your individual projects. Now let's talk about how to actually arrange your video and audio tracks. We'll start with the video tracks. V1, 2, 3 and 4 is where most of your picture editing should be happening. This is where all the footage you need to craft each scene lives. You know, you can also add simple software effects in these tracks like uh, dissolves and resizing, transitions if you want. V5 is for VFX. This is where you should be putting any externally generated graphics or visual effects. For example, green screen and digital characters, etc. If you're using After Effects and you want to take advantage of the dynamic link, simply duplicate the clip into the V5 and then use that for your dynamic link so that you keep one version of the clip clean. V6 is for temporary color grade. Now the actual color grading process doesn't start until after the picture is locked. Picture lock is the point where the director and the editor agree to no longer make adjustments to the picture cut of the movie. It is then passed on to sound design and color grading. So before the picture lock is achieved, it helps to be able to see what the final film may look like. So uh, the V6 track is where you might want to throw a creative lot, for example, to affect every clip or maybe just some color correction on certain clips. This track is where all of this should be done. Uh, personally, I like to use two. So I like to use one for an overall creative lot and then the second one to address some specific clips. Just make sure that you label your track so that you know that you have V6A and V6B. V7 is for matte or aspect ratio overlays, if you want to call it that. So whether you're working with HDTV 16x9 or Letterbox 185.1 or Cinemascope 235.1, this helps helps you to monitor your framing and also gives you a cohesive viewing experience, especially when you have footage of varying aspect ratios on your timeline. So everything is looking the same. And finally, V8 is for subtitles or captions. This track can easily be turned off or on and the subtitles can easily be sent for translation and another language can then easily just be replaced. Again, each project differs. You know, you can go from using say only V1 to V4 on one project and then using say V1 to V8 on another project. Now let's get into audio. Before we talk about individual tracks, it is worth noting that the sound design of a project is usually grouped into four. Dialogue, sound effects, ambience, and music. 
For distribution, sound effects and ambience is often joined together to then form what we call the M and E tracks, that is the music and effects tracks. Now we won't go too advanced into say 5.1 surround and above, but bring out your pencil and paper and take note of these things that I'm about to share with you now. Mm -hmm. Dialogue and folly are usually mono tracks that are sent to the central channel, while the rest are usually stereo tracks that are sent to either the front left and right or the back left and right. That's it. Now let's dive into our audio tracks. A1 to A3, just like with video, is for your dialogue tracks. A4 is also dialogue, but it's usually reserved for voiceover and narrations. Track A5 to A8 are for your mono sound effects. So that means that's where Folly lives. I'm going to be making a separate video on Folly recording. So if you haven't subscribed already, now would be a good time to do so. And make sure you hit the bell icon so that you actually get notified when that video comes out. Tracks A9 to A12 are for stereo sound effects. So this includes your room tone, your ambience, your special sound effects, etc. And then we have tracks A13 and A14, which is usually for our music. Now tracks A15 to A17 are usually for your audio stands. So if you're working with a sound designer, as you should, they won't send you all the individual clips, rather they will send you stems. So for example, the dialogue stem will have uh, A1 to A4 merged into a single um, audio clip. So towards the end of your project, you will mute all the other tracks from A1 to A14 and only the stems will now be the ones that are active. So those are some basic principles to keep in mind when organizing your movie editing timeline. Of course, there's a lot more you can do to make your timeline work for you. For example, labeling your clips and tracks with color to enable you easily at a glance know what group of audio you're working with and what group of audio you're looking at. For example, you might color your dialogue tracks as green while your sound effects tracks might be yellow. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And till then, bye.